Hello, everyone. Hello. Hi. I'm speaking tonight. OK. Here comes the people.
at I Hello. Hi. Hi. Laurie, at first I thought that was a bottle of Jack Daniels. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you call Toastmasters. Absolutely. <clears throat> you ever been to Chicago? Uh, I have been to Chicago. Really? What part? Yeah. Uh, downtown in the middle of winter in 2001. Oh. And it was cold and windy. Ooh, you got that crisp delicious wind chill from absolutely the absolutely so yeah that's the only time i've been to chicago but i really liked it right in your face and all over it goes through your clothes and <laughs> i could go there i'm gonna do that i'm gonna go to the what is it the bean the millennium ball whatever they call it the bean uh when it's uh zero uh, uh below zero sub zero temperatures and i'm gonna see how you know what that's like in Chicago. Yeah, Chicago. Yeah, you know they call the bean. It's called the. I bean. don't know. I don't know that. No. Huge. It's a huge, uh, bean-like shape. I don't know. I think okay. it's been millions on it. Okay. Cool. It's been millions on it. And okay. You, can you take pictures, and you can see, you know, the. Um, you know, so are you not? Are you not in Chicago? Oh no! Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm in. I'm, oh, okay. in, I'm in Hillside. Okay. In Hill Close enough. Yeah, it's a suburb of Chicago. Yeah. Cool. And Thank you're you. joining us tonight in London. Oh yeah. I love it. Are you in, are you in Chicago right now and just dialing your remote? <laughs> yeah. Great. That's the great thing about these web-based ones. You gotta love it. <laughs> she has so many colors. Uh, tips. Yeah. Excellent. Well, I'm looking for, I'm looking forward to your session. I've never watched a level five uh, speech presentation panel discussion. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. We'll see. Hey, Rupa. Hey, everyone. How's it going? Could I just ask, what's a level five panel discussion? So there are five levels in the Toastmasters Pathways program. Level one, level two, level three, level four, and guess what, level five. Um, and Lori is doing the level five, which is the top level. So once she finishes that, she completes that pathway and then moves on and does another one. Okay, great, sounds good. But good question. And have you worked with Trojans before? Or did you just think, hmm, let me pick a club, 
somewhere on the in the globe on the globe. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I'm very uh, I'm very familiar with Mo, and you know, you know, well, obviously, you know, Mo is my friend, so I, you know, I I text you know with her back and forth, and I say, you know, Mo, I need your help. You know, would you please <laughs> do me the honors, do me the favors? And she said, Yeah, absolutely. And I said, Oh, awesome. You know, because in my club, you know, we don't have really the the manpower, obviously. Um, but it has to be four panelists from an outside club. That's right. what um, that's what the purpose statement says. So when you guys get to your level five, so you know what to do. Yeah, great. <laughs> Very good. Good awesome. luck. Thank you. Yeah. Good evening. Hi, Flora. Hi, Laurie. How are you? Good. Thanks, Flora, for your help. I appreciate this so much. <laughs> Hope you go well. Looking forward to it. Thank you. Hi, Davy. Hi, Rupa. Melanie. Molly. Hi, Flora. <laughs> Thank you for stepping up um, in the half masker role. And hi, Reiki. Hi, Flora, evening. So Flora, have many people responded to the survey about meeting in person versus online? <laughs> well, can I tell you the truth? I haven't, haven't looked at the results yet. So yeah. this will do that. Uh, I should probably have done that before the meeting, but um, yeah, haven't. It's fairly, fairly, very, very, very busy at work. But I'll do that over the weekend. It looks like there's more interest than in uh, July, so which is a positive thing. In, in terms of question and um, yeah, what I've seen from text as well. Good. <clears throat> but I don't know if things have changed. Because in July, the from the answer, it was very clear that the member were not ready to go back to a physical meeting. Right. <clears throat> so we'll see if you know, the feeling has changed. Excuse me. Um, I had a question for David. Yeah. Um, so I, I believe I'm supposed to be doing the time timekeeping today and I just wanted you to are. ask. Yes. So when it's time to move to the next stage, should I, if, if I need to know, Notify you? Should I just send you a message because I don't want to disrupt the flow of things? The other sure. Thing. So you can message me each. So each of the uh, we have we have two scheduled speeches tonight. So Laurie's Laurie's is a, a longer one. So she has between twenty and forty minutes yeah. because obviously she's she's curating a panel discussion. And so the way it would work is on that one you would you would put the green light on at twenty minutes. You'd put the amber light on at thirty minutes. And you'll put the red light on at 40 minutes. And for the other speaker, which is Momo, which is a standard five to seven, then it's five, six, and seven green, amber, red. And then okay, apart um, from that, apart from that, if there are any other things where we need timing, like on evaluations and things, then you can just I'll let you know how much time to put up. But those mm -hmm. are the two main ones. Okay, so um, so just the lights is fine all throughout. Just the lights is fine. Yeah, absolutely. Great. Do you want to test it and see if they work, Melanie? Sure. Hi, Simon. Hi, Luca. Perfect, it works. All good. Rock and roll. Yeah. And there's Irina coming on board. Hey, Irina. Good evening. How good is evening. everyone? Very good. How are you? Good, good. Surviving. I have a question for you, Irina, that's got nothing to do with Toastmasters, but we haven't started officially yet, so I'm going to ask it. Are you going next week to the London Build Expo? No, unfortunately. Ah, okay. Because I'm presenting on behalf of one of my clients the 
Women in Construction Award. Oh, nice. Mm. When, when is that again, David? So did somebody ask somebody? Wh when is that? It's next week. Yeah. It's on the uh, Wednesday and Thursday of next week. Mm, yeah, no. I think I've looked at that and I can't make it because it's during my work. Too bad. I know, I'm missing all the good stuff all the time. <laughs> Have to change my job. Yep. It's good to see new faces, introsions. Why is everyone so quiet? We didn't they're on, start yet. They're, they're all on mute. They're all on mute. <laughs> Nobody's mm -hmm. gonna bite you, you know? <laughs> Hi guys, this is Jay. Hi Jay. Hi Jay. Hi, Jay. Is it your first time with us? Yes. Well done. Ah, welcome. Finally made it. <laughs> I've been trying for the last three times. Also, Luca Hello. is our latest member who have, uh, who have recently joined us. Just want to introduce everyone to Luca. And Melanie has also recently joined us. Hi, Luca. Hi, Melanie. Hi, Mel Hi Melanie. Hi, Melanie. Hi, everyone. Thanks for uh, accepting me. It's a pleasure to, to be with you. Mr. Toastmaster, can I um, have you find me a member to do me a written evaluation of my evaluation, please? Unless Flora's got me one. Uh, yes, Flora. I don't know. Flora. I haven't. Back. I haven't yet. I was looking to see who, who was um, joining and not assigned to a role. I can do. What, what do I need to do? I'll send you the form in the chat, Irina, or via email. <laughs> Thank you. Is that an evaluation? Yeah, uh, an evaluation of my evaluation for level. Okay. okay. And Rupa, do you do that for level four? Is that? No, it's a level one. So it's part oh, it's level one. Project two, level one. Uh -huh. Back to the icebreaker. Did... Uh, do you know what? If I was going to be going to do another icebreaker, but you know, if we're good, <laughs> so it's fine. Ready to do another icebreaker for sure. <clears throat> But yeah, so uh, the evaluation and feedback project, you've got the two speeches and you have to do an evaluation and have someone do you a written evaluation of the evaluation. Got it. Yeah, I didn't actually realize that we had to have a written evaluation for that. Okay, good, good to know. Laura, who's the sergeant at arms? The sergeant of arm uh, role is actually vacant. Ah, okay. <laughs> so yeah, for those who miss a few meetings, um, that's one position we are trying to fill. Okay, okay. That I haven't filled since the last meeting. So um, I don't know actually if um, Tanus is joining us tonight usually because he does a zoom master role then he will do the um introduction otherwise i would do it um then we have simon with us who is one of the distinguished sergeant at arms <laughs> <laughs> 
it's true actually simon could you could do it yeah. you know I, i've not missed doing that rule at all <laughs> but you I could mean, do I, the introduction <laughs> yeah, I, I i can i can bomb it for you if you would like me to Absolutely i'll just make that. it up talk <laughs> absolute rubbish have you decided not to change your background since the last meeting uh, i'm i'm <laughs> Going to go through a few more pictures and decide which one I like. <laughs> but also give you a headache. Well, how's it? No. What? No. So Apple tells me it's seven thirty. So uh, Simon, would you please open the meeting? Hello. Good evening, and welcome to Trojans. Can you hear me? Great, thank you. Um, totally unprepared, but um, I'd like to welcome you all to London Trojans online meeting. There's a few housekeeping rules. If you don't want to be recorded, um, obviously switch your video off and we won't see you. But if you actually are gonna be taking part in table topics in the second half of the meeting, then we can't fully evaluate you without seeing your face and body movements on screen. Uh, the second housekeeping rule is that we'll be having a commercial break around about 8.30. So make yourselves a cup of tea, have some biscuits, or have something stronger. And in the meantime, I won't direct you to where the toilets are because you know where your own personal toilets are and where to go. So enough rubbish for me and let's crack on with the meeting. So let me hand you over to the Toastmaster of the evening, who is David Horn. Over to you, David. Thank you so much. I'm just gonna quickly slide it back to the president of the club in case she wants to say anything to open. Thanks, David, thanks. Um, I've actually <laughs> prepared a, a, a personal story that I wanted to share um, for, for, for the opening, but I wanted first to welcome Everyone, I'm actually glad to see uh, so many of you uh, tonight. Um, there has been a lot of fatigue or a lot of, uh, you know, life is getting very busy at the moment, that type of spirit uh, lately. And usually autumn is kind of the time where everyone feels a bit tired because, uh, you know, it's, it's the end of the summer and then not yet the, the end of the year break. But um, so I'm glad to see a lot of, yeah, a lot of you coming back. Uh, in terms of my small story, what I wanted to share with you is early this week, I had actually that moment when I was saying to myself, I am so glad I've joined Toastmaster back 18 months ago because my, I was asked to make a presentation in front of the whole company on the financial results. Um, and that was totally not planned. Uh, my manager, who, what, who was my manager, um, who has left uh, for another role within the group, who was a CFO, uh, was not available to do, to do the presentation. Um, and I was just asked by the managing director, say, do you want to present? And what I was so glad is that I didn't have any stress. I was just say, well, it's more work because you have to prepare for it, but it just felt natural. And that was just amazing because if, yeah, 18 months ago, I would just probably have gone for it, but I would just have been panicked, I would have, you know, have the voice that just trembled and uh, yeah, it, it would have been done, but not, not with confidence. So I was uh, happy uh, that um, I, I'm part of those meetings. I can practice every uh, other week. And I think that the power of Toastmaster is just remind, remind for all of you to remember, why did you join? Um, and, and that, you know, making sure by participating, coming to meeting, you're actually working working on, on those objectives. So with that in mind, I'll hand um, over now to our Toastmaster for this evening, David Vaughan. 
Thank you very much, Flora, and good evening, everyone. So I'm your Toastmaster this evening. It is my job to run the meeting uh, and to keep us on time and to make sure all of the various bits and pieces happen uh, and happen in the right order. Um, and in addition to that, I have a theme for this evening, and it's it's quite nice having heard what uh, what Flora said, because my theme <clears throat> is linked to the fact that tomorrow is Remembrance Day. Um, and uh, I'm sure most people know, but Remembrance Day is a commemoration of uh, all of the people who died in, well, principally in the First and Second World Wars. So the First World War, the great war to end all wars that then led to another world war. Um, and there have been many other deaths since. And, and basically, any to anyone who has fallen in the service of their country, um, Remembrance Day is all about remembering them. And that's a somber and serious occasion. But what I want to do this evening is, is have everybody, uh, when, when you come up to, the, to, to be on stage for the first time, whether you're a speaker, an evaluator, or someone who has one of the roles, I want you to share a memory of one of your first experiences in Toastmasters. Um, and I know we have a wide range of experience from people in the club tonight. So it'll be, it'll be good fun to, um, to, to, to share those details. And um, I'll kick things off by remembering my, not my first night, which I do remember, but my second night uh, attending Trojan Speakers, which was in March or April of 2000. 2016. So I've been a member for five and a half years. Um, I think I joined about two weeks after Rupa did. Um, and the, my first night was actually a, a competition night, and I don't really have much memory of that. Uh, but my second night, I participated in and won the table topics competition. And um, I thought, okay, I'm enjoying this. I want to do more of this. And yeah, five and a half years later, um, and I've been the club president for a couple of years. I was the VPE. I was the treasurer. Um, so, yeah, it's been a fantastic experience. So that's mine. What I'd like to do now is introduce um, a few of the other people who are carrying on roles this evening. So I'm not the only person who's responsible for running this. I have the overall perspective, but I have uh, three helpers in particular. I have a timekeeper, a grammarian, and a hark master, and I'll call them up one by one to ask them to introduce themselves, share with us a memory and explain their roles. So I'll start with the timekeeper, uh, which is Melanie Ranatunga. So Melanie, over to you. Thanks. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, as timekeeper, I will time the table topic speakers, um, the, the speeches and evaluations, and using the um the backgrounds the green yellow and red um i'm going to alert everybody of the time left uh, so with table topics um at one minute i'll raise the green card at one and a half the yellow two minutes the red and in total the limit is two minutes um so yes uh with the breaker speeches um which i don't think there are any today are there icebreakers no nope. probably no um, and so with uh, the other speeches, five to seven minutes usually, um, though I'm not sure that that's happening. We've got longer sessions instead. And the individual evaluation should be between two to three minutes. At two minutes, it would be green, two and a half, yellow, and three minutes, it will be the red card. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Oh, and uh, a Toastmasters memory. Uh, yes. Okay. So... Um, as mentioned a little earlier, I did just join um, about a week or a few weeks ago. And um, so therefore with this club, I don't have too many memories, but I would say that I tried Toastmasters a couple of years ago um, in person. And I, to be quite honest, I was uh, scared off because it was, um, it was pretty uh, daunting for me at the time. So I would say that at this point, I feel um, that I've come a little bit further and, yeah, I'd, I'd like to build on the memory. So, <laughs> wonderful. Well, all I'll all I'll say on behalf of Flora is that uh, Trojans is the safest and friendliest club in the world. So, excellent, wonderful. Thank you very much. And and just for everybody's reference, normally when we meet uh, in person, we usually whenever someone comes up onto the stage, we clap and shake hands to hand over the the ownership of the stage. But in this 
virtual world, we just do the kind of the jazz hands. So if you're sitting there wondering why, why is everybody going like this? This is our equivalent of clapping. So I will next uh, introduce our grammarian for the evening, and that is Nish the Chu. And Nish, would you please come up and explain to us your role and share with us one of your memories? Thank you, David. As your grammarian tonight, of course, I would be looking at good use of language, good vocabulary, alliteration, and anything delightful that comes out of your performances. But today I want to lay down two rules. First, I'd like to see better use of better words. For example, instead of saying love, why not say adore? Instead of shocked, say aghast. Instead of think, how about we use contemplate? And uh, to give you a few more examples, instead of saying clever, let's say cunning, or instead of saying happy, how about delight? And the second rule is that today I'd like you to somehow shoehorn the words flying pig or flying pigs in your speeches, your evaluations. If you can shoehorn the words flying pig or flying pigs, you will, I will buy you a cup of coffee when we meet. <laughs> I'd love to see some creativity tonight. So back to, no, I have to share a memory as well, right? So I've been with Toastmasters for about, uh, for over four years. I joined uh, after a car crash interview, a job interview in 2017. There have been several wonderful speeches, but then there are two things that stand out uh, in my memory. And fortunately or luckily, both of these things come from the same member of Trojan speakers. Actually, he's no longer a member with Trojans. The first one, uh, he gave a speech about the news of uh, his mother's plane crash. That was so profound. And uh, the speech was about uh, a time when this member was eight years old and he was watching TV sometime in 1970s and he saw the news of his mother's plane crash. His mother survived, but it was so profound. I don't remember feeling more shaken, more moved uh, by any other speech than this one. And the second thing that this person taught me was, you do not remember what people say, but you always remember how they make you feel. And I have never forgotten that. And this person is Adrian Lane. If you ever get a chance to visit Chilton Speakers, go say hello to him and ask him about this wonderful speech he once gave. Back to David. Fantastic. Thank you, Nish. I'm just trying to figure out how to put flying pigs in there, but I'll, I'll, I'll find it on another occasion. And then my final um, role person this evening is one of our newest members, uh, Mali Doobie, who will be our Hark Master this evening. Mali, would you please come onto the stage and explain your role and share a memory, even though you may not have too many yet so far. Hello all, uh, my role is Hark Master and ready to, I, I get ready for a question, uh, end of meeting. I, ask some question, all of you. So uh, this is my role today. And uh, my memory for uh, Toastmaster is only I, last week, I was nervous to uh, say um, uh, table topic. So there's not much uh, uh, memory in this field, but I will definitely improve myself in this group club. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Mali. And, and well done and bravo to both you and also to Melanie for, for, for taking on roles so early in your uh, Toastmasters experience. So well done. Thank you. So this evening, um, as Simon explained, we have two halves to our program. Uh, the first half is the prepared speeches and we have two uh, one of them is a rather longer one, which is a 20 to 40 minutes because it's it's not actually a speech. It's it's curating a panel discussion. Uh, and then the second one will be a speech of five to seven minutes. Um, and so what I'd like to do is call up our 
first evaluator, which is Lucy, uh, to explain the objectives of Laurie's speech. So Lucy, over to you. Yep, thanks. Um, so today I will um, evaluate Laurie. So the purpose of her speech is about ethical leadership. Um, so it will be uh, around 20 to 40 minutes long. And I will take care about the clarity, the um, comfort level, but also the questions and answer part. Um, and I, I will give my evaluation after that. Um, and for the memory I have, um, I've done quite recently. So I will say it's more the welcoming of people. And that's all for me. Excellent. Thank you very much. Well, without further ado, then I'd like to welcome to the stage Laurie G. Favela with a speech slash panel discussion entitled Two Different People. Two Different People, Laurie G. Favela. All right, fellow Toastmasters, Trojans, I'm very glad to do this speech today on two very individual or different people. Why did I pick these two individuals? Well, <laughs> in one way or another, they influence me in leadership and in implementing change. I wanna start out with the first individual. I, he is from Illinois, well, somewhat from Illinois. Uh, he actually started what we call today Toastmasters. Mr. Uh, Schmedley started this organization back with a idea in mind to give leadership potential and ethics in an organization. I, I first thought about what individual that I was going to research and talk about in my speech. And Mr. Ralph Chestnut Smedley really captivated me because he gave to a group of young men an idea back in the YMCA where he was working or as volunteering. He gave them an idea of leadership style in which he had these young men basically work out speeches and he also had evaluators in these particular meetings. Now, when we, hold, when we hold a meeting here at Toastmasters, it obviously it's not just to say that we will hold a meeting. There's a lot of detail that comes to mind. And like I was coordinating with Mo and like I was coordinating with uh, Flora about how it is that I was going to come about with my speech. And it's the same it's, it's the same process back then where Mr. Smedley uh, did for these young men. His organization, Toastmasters, exceeds more than 364 uh, members. That's 364,000 members with 16,200 clubs in 145 countries. That's growing it's expanding and the vision that he had totally uh, upholds me. Now, um, where was Mr. Ralph Chesna Sredley? Well, he was born February 22nd, 1878, and he obviously died September 11th of 1965. How can I describe him? Well, from what we know of him, he wasn't a show off, he wasn't flashy, and he wasn't flamboyant. 
So he was kind of like the shy type. Does that sound familiar to some of us? It certainly does to me because I've been shy all of my life and Toastmasters has given me the platform to enable me to break out of that shyness. Uh, he was part of the, his personal life, he was part of the uh, Wesleyan University at Bloomington, Illinois. I do recognize that this is somewhat of a Protestant university and that there was a particular high school, I mean, um, that there was a particular um, school named after him. Wow. Now that is what you call somewhat uh, a vision, a visionary. So my question to you is think, of, think, think about this to ponder. How has your vision for what Mr. Ralph C. Smedley did in Toastmasters and how has that impacted you? Ponder on that question later and I will come back to our panelists. Now, turning the tables on ethical leadership. Why did I decide to, to want to research Al Capone? Well, for the impact or for actually the question is this, I live in Hillside, Illinois, and I am very close to Mar Carmel Cemetery where Mr. Capone is buried. Yes, the Al Capone, he is not your everyday Toastmaster and you don't want to have him for dinner. So do we understand and know much about the life of Al Capone? Yes, we do. His manner of ethics and leadership were corruption, bribery, murder, anything under the prostitution era. Is that what you want to call it, Toastmasters? Yeah, I know. He's not your typical leader. But what I do like is this. When Prime Amazon decided to do building the mob in Chicago, I wanted to go in deeper in the sense that I, myself, am just within my own little world. I have no idea about the corruption. I've never even seen a joint or let alone crack in person. Does that tell you how sheltered I am? Al Capone, from January 17th, 1899 to January 20th, 25th, 1947. I believe he was about maybe 48 years old, something like that. He's obviously resting at Mount Carmel Cemetery here in Hillside, Illinois. His nickname is Scarface, Big Al, Public Enemy Number One, and Snorky. I mentioned before that his organization was more or less than down with the ethics and leadership. He was a leader but the ethics were on a downright spiral. His ways of notorious and holding a gun to your head if you deceived him were obviously very terrifying to those in his closest organization. I did read or understood that bribery was one of his biggest entails in the city of Cicero. Illinois, which is about what, 20 minutes from here? He killed and massacred all of the electoral, fictional, uh, electoral officials that made or actually deceived or came across his organization of crime. He was also a big kingpin. So could you imagine all of the city gangs in the Chicago area? Yeah, uh, he was a hit after a while, wasn't he? Do 
you laugh at that? How can you picture Al Capone in the gangs of the UK? I know he did have a lot of rival gangs in the Irish because some of the big drug cartels and prostitution kingpins, if that's what you call them, were against him here in the Chicagoland area. So for today, I don't know what your take is on Al Capone, but I do want to ask you a couple of questions on your take on these two separate individuals. Now, I'm gonna start my panel of discussion. And I'm going to begin, oh, Flora, with the first question. Dill, can you please turn on your camera, Dill? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Dill, mm -hmm. let me ask, what is your opinion on both organizations? My opinion on both organizations. Um, Obviously, there's there are very different organizations. Um, one is an educational one. Excuse me. Sorry about that. One is an educational one, which has helped many many people get out of their um, comfort zone to be out there speaking with the public or with whatever struggles they are having, especially to do with speaking out, speaking um, out for yourself and to express yourself in a more constructive way. And on the other hand, um, Al Capone, okay. Um, I've heard of his name, but this is the first time uh, I've uh, in depth uh, with your speech is the first time I have heard about what he actually does. And it's, he's more of a criminal organization, a corrupt one, which you have already mentioned. And I would say it's not an ethical, <laughs> it's not an ethical leadership to be uh, in that position. Where else, if we have to compare, Ra Mr. Ralph Medley was more ethical in that sense. Thank you. Thank you, Dale. Nista Chu, Nista, same question. What is your take on both organizations. Thank you, Laurie. My brief was uh, for only two words, ethical leadership. I do not know much about Mr. Smedley or Mr. Al Capone, but what I understand and the notes that I made, um, I thought this would be in the context of a company. Uh, since it's not, um, I'm just gonna say a couple of things. You gave us a brief description uh, uh, about the, you told us about the life of Mr. Al Capone. Oh, what kind of leader was he in his own band of criminals? Was he someone who knew the names of all the members? Did he look out for them? Did he, uh, if, if anyone died in his service, did he look after their families? What kind of leader was he? Even if his business was questionable, illegal, but what kind of leader was he? Was he at least ethical? Did he follow any ethics towards his own, um, his own team? So the notes, uh, the, the points that I had made and how I understood this panel was, uh, let's say it's a company. And I, I say that about Mr. Smedley as well. If it is a small company, does the leader know the name of the, the, the names of the children of the lowest 
earning employee. And if it is a big company, for example, a big cartel or something like as big as uh, Google or Amazon, then at least does the leader know the wages of the employee at the bottom? So this is how I had initially understood uh, this panel. But then in the context of Mr. Smedley and Mr. Al Capone, regardless of what they did and their impact on the world, what kind of leaders were they in their own organizations and own, in their own spheres is how I would um, measure them against the yardsticks of or benchmarks of ethical leadership. Thank you, Nishta. Simon Bagdama, same question to you, please. It's a situation whereby I would look at, I try and put myself in the boots of both individuals. What I might consider to be moral and ethical, or immoral and unethical, may be regarded in the opposite vein by either of those two individuals. We don't know their upbringing as such. Al Capone could have had a dreadful upbringing. He could have been abused at home. He could have had alcoholic parents, friends who'd beat him up, etc. And so far, as far as he was concerned, if he took his own way, if he cheated somebody and got a slightly better position in life, he might regard that as being honest and ethical. Similarly, with um, the gentleman who created Toastmasters, he, he's chosen to improve people mentally and verbally. Is that any better than perhaps helping someone physically? Why didn't he perhaps set up a hospital to treat sick people? That might have benefited more people and made him more famous and renowned than through an organization which just seeks to improve an individual's speaking abilities and their confidence. Um, and I think our judgments that we are trying to put on these people is also affected by our own personal upbringing and experiences. As the two, I find, although Al Capone perhaps a more morally reprehensible person, I could understand his ethics and morals far more than I could from the member who created Toastmasters. Um, that's not meant to be inflammatory, but I feel that perhaps he was more of an underdog and wanted to make his own way in the world to make life better for himself. Thank you. Sumit Singh, same question for you, please. Between Al Capone and uh, Ralph Smedley, for me, I think it's a very clear cut choice. It's not just about the ethical bit, it's also the legality of the whole situation. So for me, if I have to consider, I can, I can accept the arguments that different societies at different times have different ethics, and they may be following those ethics at that point of time. But Al Capone, what he did at any point in time, or at least like uh, uh, at any uh, at any time in the civilized history, the results that we got, or or whatever little that I know about him, I thought like he was um, he wasn't an ethical. I don't know. Uh, he he might have been a good leader, but he might not. Uh, he he was definitely not an ethical leader, and I thought he got away very lightly on tax returns or something, rather than something uh, uh, much more grievous things that he had done. In terms of what Ralph Smedley did, my my argument is uh, it is an honorable thing to do, and probably at that point of time, a, a breakthrough thing. And it requires a lot of courage to incentivize people to become leaders, uh, to become good speakers at the time when there wasn't enough attention provided to it. And, and probably he was ahead of time that after 50, 70 years, there's a lot more people who are joining Toastmasters. So for me, 
it's uh, it's a very clear cut choice and ralph smedley had done a tremendous uh, good in terms of the ethical leadership and in terms of the overall good for the society thank you sumit back to dill dill you are the leader of both organizations one a good organization and the other one a criminal organization how would you change both organizations okay thank you for the question okay bad and a good leader Ooh, that is two different, very different organizations to lead. And I'm stomp on this. I wouldn't really change. I don't think there's much that I can change in terms of when it comes to Ralph's medleys, because in my opinion, He's already done a really good job in making leaders are, in my opinion, ethical, um, following all those rules and regulations kind of thing, um, civilized. Um, as for uh, our Al Capone um, business organization, <laughs> I'd do exactly pro the opposite of what he did. Um, it's a criminal organization, so I would mm, <laughs> I'll not really It's a criminal organization. I know he, in his own way, he had led it to success for his own benefit, I'm guessing. Um, but I would say I'll, <laughs> how can I change it? Um, do everything legally, I guess. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Nishta, same question, please. Going back in time, I do not know the extenuating circumstances of these two men. But uh, for the first person, Mr. Smedley, if I was the, if I were to head the organization, and I know it's easier said than done, I would look around myself and see if this organization is not uh, only accessible to a few privileged people. Am I including everyone? Am I including the most marginalized people? Am I, is it inclusive? Is it diverse to make it better? Does it include women? Uh, yes, it's very woke to talk about these things in 2021, but I do not know the circumstances when he started the organization. When it comes to Mr. Al Capone, I would uh, mention the honor amongst thieves, the code of conduct. While he was a morally reprehensible uh, person and he, um, he was an sort of an outlaw and he did a lot of bad things, he killed people or more than that, but was he some, some kind of Robin Hood? Did he steal from the rich to benefit or to share the wealth with the, with the needy, with the poorest? And did he respect the people or take care of the people who were uh, his partners in crime? If anybody died, if anyone took a bullet for him, did he take care of their families? Did he have integrity? So this is what I would do if I were to uh, become a brigand or an outlaw. I would, if I'm free to kill anyone, but I'll make sure I have this code of conduct, this honor and integrity in my team to make sure that people are not my in my team are just not dying for my own selfish reasons. I am taking care of them and I'm looking after them. Back to you, Laurie. Thank you. Simon, the same question for you. I broadly agree with what Nishta has said regarding Smedley. With regards to Al Capone, um, provided he looked after his members properly, um, 
provided he looked after their children if they were killed, if they were to take a bullet from, yes, make sure their families were not adversely affected. The fact that he killed other criminals, well, that's good. I have no problem with that at all. Especially if these criminals had performed worse actions than they had. At the end of the day, all you're doing is just reducing the total number of criminals. If one man can kill 10 people who are criminals, great. I'm happy with that. After all, it's America. You have gun laws, etc., etc. <laughs> you believe in that right, so go for it. I do believe that um, the fact that he had perhaps a close-knit organisation mean that they trusted him and believed in him. So that's a very good thing to have in a leader. That means people will do more for you. Again, it's, it's something that uh, I don't think we should necessarily disparage Al Capone. I think perhaps he was just misunderstood. And with too many sort of do-goody people in this world knocking him down, I think perhaps reappraise the situation from his point of view. It must be difficult running an organization with, like he was running, much easier for Smedley, just pass the responsibility down onto people further down the tune. Al Capone couldn't do that. He had to make sure he had his finger on every trigger, on the pulse of everyone to make sure they did what he was telling him to do. So <laughs> I think Al Capone, yeah, approximately nothing much to do, but Al Capone, yeah. I think ultimately he tried to encourage a well-run, well-organized society. I take, a, I take my hat off to him. So Mitz, same question. I guess like if I'm the leader of um, Al Capone's um, organization, I would try to find ways how I, I would be able to rehabilitate my uh, underlings or the, or the people who are there uh, in my organization, why uh, like try to understand why they have joined this sort of an organization and if I, if I can improve their lives somehow by going into more respectable means, probably I will try to do that. Even if it is, if I'm an ethical leader, it would, it would be hurting my business, but at least it would be helpful for my uh, employees or probably if, uh, even the society. In case of Ralph Smedley, I think I would try, uh, like even if it is a good organization, I will try to uh, try to see like uh, if it can be made a bit better. I'll try to suggest improving Pathways website, maybe something like that, like uh, which is affecting a lot of Toastmasters. And if and if the organization is not listening to it, probably I will have Al Capone give them a phone call so that they can improve uh, those websites and systems a bit better. So I guess that's the only thing that I can remember uh, in terms of making changes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> the last question that I have is, uh, how is leadership and mentorship um, in your take, uh, from your take, I didn't know how to word how to word this question. How is leadership and mentorship uh, growing today in both organizations? Leadership and mentorship, both organization, how it is growing. Um, well. in the sense of a criminal organization uh, how a leadership or mentorship is developed um, i'm not sure how it is developed or how it is going about um, i would say it is 
normally when it comes to these kind of things, it's um, follow what the other one has done kind of thing, especially um, depending on what the big leader is, Al Capone or Ralph, Mr. Ralph Smedley. Um, their underlinings as a leader, or um, they would be the mentors, I would say, um, when it comes to developing leaders. And depending on what they pass on to their underlinings or new generations, it, it kind of like a chain, it, it more or less continues following the same pattern unless there's a change in the middle. I'd say that. Thanks. Thank you. Nishta, thank you. Same question. Mori, in my view, every mentor may not be a leader, but every leader, whether they realize it or not, is a mentor. So in both organizations, if you are the leader, your team is watching you, they're emulating your actions, your thinking, your culture, you set the culture. Your thinking, your attitude becomes a template for your team to follow. So in both organizations, um, a leader is essentially a mentor. A mentor may not be a leader. So it's very important that uh, uh, whatever you do, like, I mean, again, it's, it's something I believe in, that you should not delegate uh, to um, subordinate a task that you cannot do yourself. So a leader, if they are not able to do that task themselves, should not delegate that to, a, to an employee. So is that what Mr. Smedley did? Is that what Mr. Al Capone did? I mean, well, you can, th this is a slippery slope. I mean, <laughs> in Mr. Al Capone's case, you could say, um, well, if you ask someone to kill somebody, did he was he able was he capable of doing that himself? So this this becomes a different kind of conversation. But uh, it, this is how I look at leadership and mentorship. I, I don't know if this answered your question. Thank you, um, Simon. Same question. They both have adopted the C one do one, teach one kind of attitude. However, they have the benefit that um, both organizations, although perhaps Al Capone had less of it, was receiving feedback. After all, if you've given a bad speech, you'll get 20 people giving you feedback saying where you've got wrong, how you can improve. Al Capone, you shoot somebody, but that body's not gonna tell you, you know, you shouldn't have gone for my height, you should have gone for my head. You've got to rely on other members giving you that necessary feedback and say, well, I'd have done it this way. So next time you do it, do it that way. And providing you can take feedback, learn from it, benefit, then your organization will just get better and better. That's all I'm going to say. Um, Sumit, same question. I think I tend to agree with Simon uh, that within uh, Toastmasters, we tend to have a lot of feedback on everything that we do, which is which is something uh, as a leader of a, a criminal organization, it would be very difficult to do. However, uh, people, uh, I can imagine people who are living um, uh, or, or, or working in these organizations, in the criminal organization, they might have more thrill. And while people in Toastmasters are doing Zoom meetings, this uh, this sort of a thrill uh, in a criminal organization may not be achieved over Zooms or something uh, something like that. Maybe there is a um, white collar uh, a crime that uh, like uh, uh, people in Al Capone in today's world would be doing. But there is definitely um, a, uh, a feedback loop which is which is very helpful within uh, Toastmasters, which is difficult to replicate within a criminal organization. Well, Toastmasters, this was a privilege to do this speech on 
two different <laughs> leaders. And the reason I wanted to do and grasp this speech and bring it on to you as introducing you to do different leaders who started two organizations. You see, I always like to get to the root of an organization, one where ethics and leadership is growing on a daily basis, and then the other, the opposite. Both leaders are at the root of how it is that, or what it is that is happening today. Toastmasters exist today, but it's not always a fun ordeal, is it? And corruption and crime exist even in our legislation and governments. So how has corruption and crime influenced the city of Chicago? And how has a leader like Al Capone influenced the gangs of the UK? Remember that just like uh, Nishta said, you bring in the code of conduct of how it is that you build a leadership organization. For me, the name of my leadership or the name of my organization is Real Virtual Demand. And I'm thinking of ways in which both leaders can play a role in how it is that I will build my organization. <laughs> no, I wouldn't want to uh, more or less sway on towards the, air, to, towards the areas of Mr. Al Capone because he used brutality, he used terror, and he used a gun to bring in funds and money. But let's look at the implications, Toastmasters. Even though the organization of Toastmasters is a volunteer organization, technically there is money in the organization of itself. And there's corruption and crime in the city of Chicago as there is in the UK, right? And unfortunately, Al Capone was that standard. Isn't that right, David B. Horn? That's the reality of where of the world that we're living in today. When we hear of corruption, either here in Chicago or in the UK, it breaks my heart, which is why I decided to do a, uh, do a research on ethical leadership on these both leaders. Without further ado, lead yourself in the place that you're in and always go back to the basics you will learn a lot mr toastmaster thank you very much Lori and uh melanie can we please have a reset of the clock to give everyone a minute to do their evaluations on Lori's speech done
Has that been a minute? Um, I didn't realize from the timing, but yes. It yeah, has been. sorry. Yes, one minute. Yeah, sorry. Okay, so next time when when it's when it's time for people to, to, to do their evaluations, it's one minute. Okay, thank you very much. So in the world of flying pigs, we go from two different people to against all the odds. And our second speaker will be Momo, uh, but to introduce her speech, I'll call on her evaluator, Rupa Data, to set up the objectives of Momo's speech. Rupa Data. Thank you very much, Mr. Toastmaster. Uh, so Momo tonight will be doing, well, she's doing the presentation mastery path and her speech is from level one, it's project two and the second speech. Um, essentially, she is taking feedback from the speech she previously did, applying that feedback to a new speech. And um, I have some objectives to, to measure her against, which I'll cover in my evaluation. Fantastic, thank you. So we're a standard speech, so it's five to seven minutes. Um, so with a speech entitled Against All Odds, Momo I. Thank you, David. Hi, all. Today I'll be introducing again to my, about, my, about my personal story. I know I have talked a, a lot about myself, but there's something more interesting that I would like to share. Uh, I grew up in Bama Mogok, and it's a small town. Uh, it is also known as Ruby Land, and it is the place where world finest ruby come from. And I was, uh, I grew up in a very rich and very strict family. And as a rich kid, I used to get everything what I want. But for me, being a naturally introverted person, uh, in a cozy corner with one book was always enough for me. And nothing felt, uh, I didn't felt that I, I needed anything more. But it all changes when I applied for my university application. Uh, my university application got rejected uh, because I wasn't a citizenship in my own country where I born. So oh, fortunately, uh, having a rich dad, he helped me out to get my citizenship within two days, paying, my, uh, paying money to the right people and in the right time. So for a moment, I was so happy. I can go back to my university of my choice. But after a few minutes, there were so many questions in my head. Uh, why we have to face all this situation? And yeah, also another question was, even a family like us, if we face all these tough situations, what about the other unfortunate people? Uh, so uh, I tried to explore a bit more. So I went out of my house and visited Alabama. And that was the moment I first sensed the dictator, dictatorship in my country. So uh, I come back to my home and I request to my dad, if I can leave out of the country and learn a bit more from the outside the country and I can come back to my home country and change the whole system. And I knew to change the whole system, education is the key. So my, my dad thought that is the impossible, uh, impossible thought and it is an uh, impossible idea. So he, he rejected all my proposal. And he warned me, if I leave the home and if I go out, I'll face so many difficulties in life and not to ask him for help in any situation. But against all family will, I left my country just after my 18th birthday and I landed here in the UK and he was right. And uh, only after five days in UK, Doncaster, uh, there was somebody come and knock my apartment and I live in a quiet residential area and uh, it was a nice place. And somebody come and knock the door. So I was desperate to talk to someone. It has been about five days, I haven't talked to anyone. I rushed to open the door and to my shock, there was no one. And uh, that continued every other day. And always it happened in the mid midnight around 10 or 11 o'clock. And police officer could not help me. They have been trying to figure out, but they don't know who, who the person is. So 
every day I'll face some different situation. Sometimes there will be no, or someday I'll receive creepy guest message, and someday uh, my window will be smashed. My window was smashed. And one December night, nearby Christmas time, when all the other family members are celebrating their Christmas time with their family member, I received one test message. That test message was, I want to make you into pieces and want to drink, I will drink your blood. And that was midnight. I, I left there with, uh, with no help and I could not get help from my dad also since I left my home. Uh, police officer also, they could not find out who the person was. Uh, I all, my life was left with all the emotional torture and fears. One day, I was on my way to university in the afternoon, and I heard somebody call me, uh, call my name. I looked back, and there was one tall man looking at me with a smile. Uh, and that person was a complete stranger to me who I have never spoken or never knew. Uh, to my shock, I believe that was the person who sent me this message. And being scared that I'll be dead, I pass out. And when I wake up, uh, I was in a place um, like a jail and the building was with all the barriers. And there was one person next to me taking all the note of my activities. I didn't know what was it. It took me about three days to digest all the information. And the next day, I manipulated that person and request uh, that person to take me out. And I distract that person and I run away from that prison. I run, run, and run, like in a movie called Forest Gum, and I never look back. I never look back. And it wasn't, uh, my bad luck never, uh, it did not end there. And it was just one part of my life in UK. Uh, uh, later, I find out that place was not a prison. It was a mental health hospital where they kept me for my safety. And then the person next to me was social worker who was there to help me in my needs. But uh, even though I had faced so many difficulties or so many challenges uh, against all the odds, I continued to learning. And during my difficulties, I learned three languages. I studied business, human resource, psychology, and philosophy. And I gained so many experience working from entry level to owning my own business. And I opened 135 bookshelves in back home in rural rural village area with the help of volunteer. And also me and my friend were planning to open a history library, history library, but it got shut down due to the military coup in Burma. And that was in 2021 February. So, oh, oh, but uh, my dream and my, my dream to change, to make changes in my back home, uh, never stop. Uh, I continue to work as a active political uh, activist for Burma, and I'm a Toastmaster now. So I'm sure these two, this both will help me to achieve my dream. And yeah, uh, my message for today is no matter what you face in your life, Keep cool, stay cool, and keep chasing your dream. Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you very much, Momo. Um, timekeeper, can we have one minute on the clock, please? And if everybody could do their evaluations.
Thank you very much. So normally at this stage, at the completion of the prepared speeches, we would have a chance for everyone to vote on the best speaker. But one of our club policies is that when there are only two speakers on the night, we don't vote for a best speaker. So we'll be passing on that this evening. Um, so what I will do now is ask Melanie to come up to the stage and give us the times of the two speakers and then we'll move on to hear their evaluations. So Melanie, over to you. Okay, so the first uh, speech, the panel discussion hosted by Laurie took 36 minutes and 58 seconds. And Momo's speech just now was eight minutes and one second long. Laurie's was within time and Momo's was about a minute and a second out. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so. Um, I will call back and I forgot to ask, I, no, I did ask um, Lucy, but I forgot to ask Rupa. So when Rupa comes up to give her evaluation, she has to share with us a memory. So we'll start with Lucy with an evaluation of Laurie's panel discussion. Over to you, Lucy. Thanks, David. Um, for Lord Astor, it was quite an insightful speech we had tonight. Um, because ethical leadership is really an important and sometimes controversial topic. Uh, what I really like in the speech we had tonight is the choice um, of the two individuals we had. Uh, it was a choice uh, to compare these two different persons. Um, and it also underlined the difficulty to define what is an ethical leadership. And it remind me, remind me um, of um, an art clash I had with some Chinese students last year at university. So thanks, Laurie, for that. That I want more to underline two things um, which can be improved. Um, the first one is more about the context of the speech, um, because, for instance, for Al Capone, I would have had um, a better understanding of what was ethics for, for him. Um, and the second improvement was more about during the panel interview, I would have preferred perhaps to have more interaction uh, with the people you ask the question for, because sometimes you just have the question, but I didn't see an interaction which could have been good. So just to, to summarize, really interesting uh, topic with a, a bold choice, so thanks for that, Laurie, but perhaps to improve more in terms of details, the context uh, you gave, uh, and to have more um, an engagement, a more conversation with the person you ask a question to. And that's it for me, David. Over to you. Super. Thank you very much, Lucy. Um, so I will then invite our second evaluator, Rupa, to come up and first of all, share with us a memory. And then when you're done, give us a thumbs up so that uh, the timekeeper can restart and uh, you can do your evaluation of Momo's speech. So Rupa Data. Awesome, thank you, David. Well, I'm gonna cheat a little bit here, if that's okay. Uh, I'm gonna reflect on a memory and talk about creating a new memory. Uh, so inevitably, David, given that you set the theme for it, um, I joined Toastmasters five years, nine months and nine days ago. Um, and yes, David was one of the first people that I got to know. And my memory is when we were having the elections for the committee that year. Um, I think I'd literally just been elected as VP membership. And uh, we had a couple of vacant positions where we didn't have any nominations. And I know David had originally said no, but then when uh, we had the floor candidates for the treasurer, he couldn't stand up fast enough and and that started a, a beautiful friendship shall we say um and a, ser a series of be uh, beautiful friendships so tomorrow morning all being well i am flying to madrid and i am going to be staying uh, the first night with my counterpart my toastmasters counterpart in spain so uh, we are an international organization and yes i'm going to be creating more memories hopefully good to go mother me whenever you're ready <laughs> okay uh, okay so Back to Momo. My first, she's not on screen. My first commendation for Momo is the fact that she said she's going to be talking about herself 
again. And some people don't necessarily want to talk about themselves. And the power of Toastmasters is the ability to repeat speeches if you want and build on speeches. And that's what she's doing through her projects. My second commendation for Momo was her fantastic storytelling ability. I wasn't sure where she was going to go, but about halfway through, I could literally see a lot of faces, David in particular, Cam and Flora, almost at the screen, gripped by Momo's story. And there were times where I was like, is she making this up or is this truly a true story? But, you know, you could tell from her body language um, and that was a commendation in the previous speech that, yeah, absolutely, she was really getting into it. Um, in terms of what to work on, these are just technical things, really. And I saw a lot of hand clasping. So that's just something to work on in your speeches. Maybe try and keep your hands to the side. There were a few filler words, the odd um and ah. But what I really liked was where Momo used and instead of ums and ahs. So she paused on the and and it worked in the places that she used it. Um, nervousness was commented on in her last speech. I didn't necessarily feel that this time. There were, there were times where I did feel like she could slow down and take a breath. However, again, the nature of her speech may have led her to be breathing quite quickly. Um, and, and that's absolutely fine. I suppose my only final comment, and this perhaps links to the timekeeping situation, there were a few points towards the end where I thought Momo had finished and actually she could have made one of those points really powerful. So that would be my only thing to work on, but uh, thank you. It was a pleasure to hear your story um, and thank you for so, being so vulnerable with us as well. Thank you very much, Rupa. So just uh, two things to pick up on before we go into uh, what is still referred to as the network break, but since we're all working at home, we can't really network, but I'll call it a tea and loo break. Um, but before we do that, uh, two things. One, in the second half of this evening's program, we will be doing table topics. And for those of you who are new to Toastmasters, table topics is impromptu speaking. And our table topics mistress this evening is Linda White. Um, and so if anybody is interested in participating in table topics, please reach out to Linda or drop her a message or something through the chat or flag your hand up. Uh, you can see Linda nodding there. Linda, anything you'd like to add? I think you said it, David, just encourage people to do it. I will give priority to paid up members who haven't had a chance to speak yet, but we have quite a few guests and guests, it's a, it's a good chance to get started. It's just one to two minutes on a, on a topic. Um, yeah. yeah, look forward to having yeah, some it's, volunteers. It's, it's fab. I definitely, definitely recommend it. Uh, so if you've not done it and you're here thinking, oh, well, I'd love to speak about something. Now is your opportunity to reach out to Linda on the on the break. So the other thing that we do before our network break is that we just give all of our guests. Uh, so that's either members from other clubs who are visiting or guests who have dropped in to see what it's what this Toastmasters thing is all about. Uh, just to give you an opportunity to, to say hello, say your name and tell us why you're here. And I'm going to call on Flora for some assistance here because I haven't been as active in our club, so I'm not sure who the members are and aren't. So Flora, could you just introduce the people who are guests and uh, and we'll have them each just, just, just literally just say your name and why you're here. So I think we can start with uh, Stefan. Hi, Stefan. Uh, yeah. Hi, everybody. Uh, so I've been uh, looking to join Toastmasters and trying to understand what you guys are all about. And then I was in, invited to come on and just listen in and see, see, as I say, what you're actually all about. So just interesting to see what it is. Thank Brilliant. You. And then uh, Jay as well is a guest. Hi all. I've been trying to attend this meeting for a long time. Um, Good evening, and thank you for having me here. 
so basically i i changed my career um, about a year ago um, because i had some exigencies at home <coughs> back um, so i became a full-time trader as akin to doing work in a, in a big organization um, doing you know heading technology services so i work for myself now i i i'm losing touch in terms of how we speak and what we do so i thought it's it's you know some point i would want to go back when the home exigency leaves me and i think you know keeping in touch with public speaking or speaking in forums or to an audience is very important because it's all about practice at least in my head if you don't practice something you tend to lose um, the ability to do it therefore i'm here to see whether this forum and this platform will will serve that and i i wish to learn from each other all of you and and hopefully some of you take something from me thank you thank you okay um and then we also have sifu if i pronounce properly yeah Hi, you are on mute. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Used to uh, using Teams more than uh, Zoom. <laughs> uh, good evening, everyone. My name is uh, Sipo Mulejani. Uh, I'm a South African living in London. Been here for about two years now. And I've been wanting to join uh, the Trojan Toastmasters now for the last year. And the reason particularly for wanting to join Toastmasters uh, started off when I was still back in South Africa, seeing the amazing transformation that uh, it has had on a few of my friends and colleagues. I'm a, an engineer and a social entrepreneur in the education space. And uh, I believe in, in education. So I've got a good story to tell based on how education has liberated my life. But uh, I haven't been able to tell the story, you know. So I'm hoping my involvement in, in Toastmasters will enable me uh, to do that. All right, thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and then we have a few uh, other visitor from other clubs. So uh, maybe we can quickly go through Ruth and Raki. Bruce first. Hi. Yeah, fellow Toastmasters and most welcome guests. So I'm visiting from Riverside Communicators. And I had a personal invitation from Flora this evening. So thank you very much. I was uh, very intrigued about the panel discussion. And I must say, I was not disappointed at all. What an incredible panel, incredibly strong panel. And I absolutely loved uh, the presentation and Momo's speech. Wow, um, incredibly powerful. So privileged to be here. Thank you. Thanks, Rose. And Raiki as well. Good evening, everyone. I am also from uh, Riverside Communicators and uh, just wanted to visit our sister club, Trojans. Thank you for having me. Thanks, and thanks for coming, yeah. Um, and then finally, uh, Laurie is, uh, is a guest as well from another Toastmaster Club in, in uh, North America. So I guess I was maybe, Laurie, I don't know if you want to tell us a bit more about the level five and what um, motivated you to do that speech. Toastmasters, I am Laurie G. Favela from People Into Public Speaking Club 7446. I am an innovative planning path ways level five. When you get to the level five, you have to learn how to, I guess they're assuming that now you can increase you know, the, your potential and you have much more experience. So yes, when you get to a level five, your speeches are between what, an hour or so? And you have to read what is in the, um, what is in the purpose statement. So what can I tell you about pathways? Get connected as much as you possibly can with your path because you will get to that level. And just be as prepared as you possibly can because 
I totally chopped this speech the first time that I gave it at my club, but now I'm glad that Momo gave me that opportunity to do this here. And this is what you can do as a Toastmaster. So potential and leadership and ethics, they're here. So you should definitely come on board. Thank you. Perfect. Thanks. Thank you, Lori. And thank you, uh, Flora, for helping me there. Um, so it is uh, 10 to 9. So we'll take a 10 minute break and reconvene at 9 p.m. sharp um, and uh, look forward to catching up with everybody. Uh, I'm just going to go grab a cup of tea and then I'll be back in a few minutes if anybody wants to chat. Uh, Flora, I'm not sure what your plans or any other committee people are, but uh, hopefully there'll be one or two people around in case anybody needs to ask any questions. Thanks, Thanks David. We'll, we'll stay put. <laughs> Do we have a decision, Flora, on the online meetings? So um, I don't. We don't have a decision yet. So the the survey is running uh, until the fifteenth of November. That's what I've put in the email, um, and I will actually look um, at the result probably over the weekend. Nice. <laughs> But yeah, so the aim is to, to make a decision so that we can plan um, what's happening next year before before the break for the year. Um, the one thing actually that I wanted to mention is about the, we wanted to do a social before before the end of the year. So I don't know if we can call it a Christmas party, but uh, um, um, similar <laughs> something to that. And I was going to probably propose a date I uh, just wanted to check with the committee that I had the right date. Oh, that's great. As long as they have <coughs> enough notice in advance, I don't think it's going to be a, a issue. <coughs> yeah. So I think, Momo, do you, can you remember the date? I think you are just going to check on my text. Yeah. Perfect. I got the date. I will make the announcement in the club business. <laughs> so, Stefan, how are you finding it so far? Uh, it's, it's quite interesting, and I'm kind of impressed with all the, the, all the people speaking. It's just uh, what I'm kind of thinking about how it would fit for me as a newcomer to fit into this, and then I think that's just something I need to uh, pick it up. Yeah, no, that, that is a good point. So when you when you become a member, there's actually a way of signing up for the role. So all of the role are the same every uh, meeting, at every meeting. But then every member can, you know, um, choose which one they want to do. <coughs> so as that, you can be a, the um, someone that helps running the meeting, so the Toastmaster, the Grammarian, the Timekeeper, or you can also prepare for a speech. Uh, so that means that you know you have to to invest a bit of time ahead, just preparing um, for the speech, and then there's guidance. So there's a, a structure to do that. <coughs> um, or another way as well is also on the table topic. So that's the second part where um, it's completely impromptu. So if you know, it's just practicing that on, on the spot. <coughs> so for me, is um, it, it's just actually you just learn by practicing and just you know having to just deal with different role and like the evaluation uh, I, I learned quite a lot by just you know giving feedback. Because uh, that depends as well, you know, you have to listen and then and then 
um, give a quick summary um, just after someone's spoken. So. Uh, so, so what I'm kind of a little bit trying to get my head around is that what's the structure to it? What am I? And I, think I would expect that it's definitely something that when you sign up in regards to when you're doing a evaluation of somebody, what are you looking for? What are the kind of the um, active listening focus that you're kind of active listening to? And how how do you kind of um, kind of bring that in? Um, as in how like I uh, don't want to kind of. Uh, so kind of trying to understand, is there kind of some kind of um, lead me into what am I actually supposed to be focusing on or what uh, kind of uh, when I do my own speeches, is there like a structure to what I should be focusing on or is it just a go do a speech and then I get feedback and, and from it or is it there's a, any kind of yeah, kind of a introduction pack or something that I should be doing, kind of working towards like a, uh, your guest Roy had a kind of a these yeah. levels, what does that mean? And how do you get That's, from one yeah. level to the next? So there's quite a lot of different way of doing things, but it will often depend on, you know, um, ourselves, I guess. But Momo is the VP, and um, I think you have a bit of a structure in terms of the induction of the new member. Okay, so, so when, when, you, when I, I don't know. Then, then... So I'm yeah. wondering if Momo is, can hear me. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, because you, you you just give some introduction in the past where like but there is a structure and you get an introduction. Um, every you know there is different way I wanted to participate. Some quite like you know to have um, a lot of um, help and um, support. Some prefer to just you know read and just go through it and just try it, uh, you know, or just by watching and trying to to do the role. Um, so it really depends on how how you want to to get involved, what support you want. Yeah. Uh, so, just, uh, so is there, is there a kind of a, um, a kind of introduction pack that you get when you join, and then you then you read through that, and then you kind of start to get um, um, activate this. And I take it this is kind of you can pick and choose. You don't have to be in every every session. It's kind of a when you can, uh, kind of thing, right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So often, um, the, the often new member just start by doing role, uh, like the timekeeper or the um, hand masker, so small role during the meeting to just get them, you know, mm -hmm. to listen to experience what it is and get to know a bit more. Um, and you just, yeah, you just learn by by watching by practicing. Okay, makes sense. It's a bit more, it is really different now that we're doing via Zoom because often you would get a lot of informal um, feedback support um, when we are meeting at the, at the meeting face to face. Um, so now it's just a case of reaching out, asking, and then the committee. So a group of people that are actually running running the club uh we know we'll, we'll ask as well it's checking on you and see see how you're getting on uh, and are you likely to have uh, like keep this almost going going forward or are you likely to go back to in person or are you going to mix it to, to uh, both sides kind of both mixes? so we are just actually run is very typical just running a, a small survey right now to just see what our member wants to do um, so when we did it in July, there was still quite a lot of COVID case. So member were not really ready to, to meet uh, again, but um, things have changed. So yeah, we just, we're just reconsidering what the next uh, year, well, next year will look like and see. And, and uh, where would you meet in person? <laughs> so I don't remember the exact address, but it's, uh, I would say maybe okay, 10 minutes George. away. Yeah, is that 10 minutes away from uh, Ealing Broadway Station? Yeah, yeah. okay. By walking this time. Andrews Church over there. Yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. Okay, thanks.
Okay, it's 9 p.m. So let's hope everybody else is back. Uh, in particular, let's hope that Linda is back because she's the table topics master. Linda, are you there? <laughs> hey, there we go. Okay, so welcome back, everybody. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope you had a good break. And I know there were some interesting discussions and conversations. Um, at this part of the meeting, I basically hand over um, for the rest of the speaking sessions uh, to our table topics master, Linda White. So Linda, if I could ask you to start with a memory and then the floor is yours. Thank you, David. Good evening, everybody. I'm going to tell you not my first, but my best, best memory from Toastmasters. It was seeing a young man who'd been shy, nervous, anxious, stammering. It was seeing him delivering a confident, engaging and inspiring speech in the finals of a Toastmaster contest. That was Harminder Dillon. I'm sure some of you have met him or seen him. And when I first met him, I thought pigs would fly before he would be such an eloquent speaker. Being there to see it and experience it, to hear him and see him was just one of the best moments of my life, never mind my life in Toastmasters. So my, that's my best memory. And my role this evening is Table Topics Master. We've had a bit of an introduction already. Table Topics are your opportunity to give a short impromptu speech. You don't have any advance warning what you're gonna talk about as happens in life. The timekeeper will put the, the green light on at one minute, the amber at one and a half, and the red at two. So we like, we like you to talk for at least a, a minute. And my topics are around remembrance. Tomorrow is the 11th of November, when in this country, a lot of people wear poppies and some organizations have a minute silence to remember people who died in, in wars. And I thought it was a good opportunity to think about remembrance and memory. Now you're not knocking me down with requests to do table topics, so I will just have to just have to pick on people. And my first question is, it's a quote really. Those who forget the past will repeat it. Those who forget the past will repeat it. Do you think that's true? And that goes to Sumit. So the quote is, those who remember, those who fail to remember the past are doomed to repeat it. That's an excellent quote by George Santana. And what I like about it is how, how much relevant it is in everyday world and in every aspect of our lives. Yes, the history would never repeat, but it rhymes. We have to look back at what has happened in the past to understand what are the things that has what are the things that has not worked in the past or what has what are the things which has really worked but how we can improve our lives not just at the personal level but at the society level if you are in an organization people who are working in an organization always tend to have a uh, have this tendency to look at charts as to how the things have progressed and look at the uh, teachings or the remembrance from uh, from that particular uh, thing, but we fail to implement those in our personal lives many of the times. It, if you look at just the COVID situation, people have forgotten what masks are, what the social distancing is, even though we are seeing a record number of um, infections within the uh, within UK. 
we have to be always vigilant on every aspect not just the personal bit but also at the society where has the society been at a detriment when they have forgotten the evils of the past and where the pigs might be flying today or they may not be flying today but we still have to have a look at what are the risk within the society madam topics master thank you sumit my next question is what is your earliest memory what is your earliest memory and that question goes to our newest member luca welcome luca hi thank you thank you um sorry my memory um about everything the first thing you remember in your life your earliest memory the first thing you remember thanks. when you were small thanks yeah uh the first memory uh it was um, when um I was in the kitchen of my house in uh, northwest of Italy, in the town Andorra, where I grew up. And in the kitchen with my grandmother, um, the mom of my mother, uh, the name uh, was uh, Luigia. And I was spending my uh, day daytime with her and watching TV and they, um, she was uh, cooking and it was a, a very nice memory for me with this, you know, the, the smell of the vegetables. Um, I grew up in countryside and watching, watching television and also a book of tales that I remember the name of the author was uh, Perot and the, I remember the images on the pages uh, was beautiful and I and now I would like to to get this book uh, back and because um, it was a, a big emotion for me uh, to have uh, another look now at uh, 45 age uh, this book uh, <laughs> as well and so I think, yeah, this is my early, um, early memories uh, by my, yeah, uh, when I was very young, so maybe two years, so yeah, two, three years, more or less. Thanks. Thank you, Luca. Those are nice memories. My next question is a request, really. Can you give us some hints or tips to improve our memories. Can you give us some hints or tips to improve our memories? And that question goes to a guest this evening. It goes to Stefan. Welcome, Stefan. Stefan, I think you're on mute. I noticed that now. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, so, so, uh, so I will start all over again. But this is a topic I don't know much about, but um, for the things I've kind of trained for myself, it's, it's about repetition uh, for in, in helping me with my memory. And the other thing is uh, image association. Uh, I'm very bad at remembering people's names. And it has to do with, uh, I think, I'm a bit of a uh, OCD or whatever they're called. It's uh, it's like my, my memory just goes all over the place. So I find a way to help me with remembering people's name is to put a famous person above that person's head when I'm talking to them, or trying to associate that person with somebody that I really know well, and and trying to. But I need to do that very quickly as I, I hear the name, or I'll forget. I don't know. It's something in my my DNA. I don't know how it is or how, how it works, but but it seemed to work for me that then um, to put it associated with, and then as well as everybody talked about, it to repeat that person's name 
as much as you can in the first couple of seconds in your conversation. So, um, so that's kind of the the, the um, tips I will give. Thank you. Thank you, Stefan. Really useful tips. My next question is, what music brings back memories to you? What music brings back memories to you? And that question goes to another guest this evening. It goes to Jay. Welcome, Jay. Hi, sorry, I was on mute. And so I listen to music in about eight different languages, including Italian. Now, some of the music that brings back the best memories is when I was quoting my wife. Um, and she happens to be Italian, who lives in Italy with her mom. Um, I live with my daughter in London. So whenever I, you know, I, I need that, you know, to go back to how we were, you know, unspoiled or whatever. I, I listen to music in Italian, particularly uh, Fabrizio De Andre and Ligabue. I don't know how many of you except um, Luca have heard about them. <laughs> so I don't know whether you appreciate the music taste. I find particularly Fabrizio is, is a poet and he talks about life in general. And I find it so revealing that somebody who, who came from Genoa, he, he was Genoese, um, can talk about life in such depth. Particularly if you understand Italian, it'll take you back into your own life, several depths inside and make you introspect. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. My next question is, what are your best memories from school? You need to cast your mind back a bit. What are your best memories from school? And that question is for another guest this evening, Sipo. Welcome, Sipo. Wasn't expecting to get a question. <laughs> so, I mean, I love music and uh, fondest memories with music uh, was uh, I'm sure you everybody on the call knows groups like uh, Boys to Men, Silk, uh, Joe to See. So that also tells my age. Um, these are people that we especially coming from South Africa, the kind of influence you know, music that was constantly on radio. Uh, it was uh, American music, especially R&B and soul. So the fondest memories from school was when we were actually on stage performing as uh, either Boys to Men or Silk or Joe to See. Uh, so that also, when you ask the question about uh, how do you, uh, you know, ensure or help yourself to remember? Uh, uh, we, we talk about this quite a lot with uh, a few of the people I went to high school with and friends, and that sort of uh, reignites memories or especially the, the fond memories. Uh, so that's, that's pretty much it, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Sipo. Next topic is why are memories important? Why are memories important? And that goes to one of our members who hasn't had an opportunity to speak yet this evening, Irina. Welcome, Irina. Oh, thank you, Linda. <laughs> Um, okay. Why uh, memories are important, did you say? Um, I could agree and disagree with that. Depends what kind of memories you're looking for. Because 
not all the memories in your life you want to remember and they might be important to you. Um, some might be sad, some might be happy, some of them might be painful. Um, even though um, some of them, they are painful, you can still learn something from them. So they're still important to you. They still bring you some sort of um, uh, positive outcome in the end because you learn from them. However, I would say from my own experience, I don't think that all of my memories, I would consider them to be important to remember. Um, I would send 10% of them, I just kind of put them in a box far, far away and I would never want to come back to them because they cause me so much pain and I would rather prefer to to not go back to them. But in general speak, memories are good for you because one, you learn something from them. Secondly, um, it reminds you of something. Um, it put um, a picture um, of something that you had in the past. And thirdly, memories are important because each change over the years. Um, so overall, take care of your own memories and be careful what you do with them. Thank you. Thank you, Irina, and thank you everyone for participating so enthusiastically and sharing what you felt about memories and remembering. I'm going to pass back now to our Toastmaster, David Horn. Did it myself there. Thank you very much, Linda. Um, and uh, well done, everybody. I'd like to call on our timekeeper to just give us the table topics times before we move on to the evaluation. Over okay, to you, great. Melanie. Thank you. So um, Sumit, the first uh, speaker, took two minutes and nine seconds. So he was slightly over time. Uh, Luca was two minutes, four seconds, slightly over. Stefan, one minute, 18, so within time. Jay, one minute, 23, within. C uh, Cifo, one minute, 30, within. And Irina, two minutes and three seconds, so slightly over. Excellent, thank you. thank you very much. And well done in particular to all of our guests who came and used up at least their full, for, for, at least, the first minute, uh, because oftentimes some when people come new and, and they've never had experience of this before, uh, they freeze up. But no, no, they were all very, very good uh, speeches. And I will now hand over to our topics evaluator, Cam Baines. Over to Cam. Good evening, everyone. It's a pleasure to be the table topics evaluator this evening. I'm. If I'm honest, I'm feeling a little bit rusty. I haven't been to a meeting in a while, but it's so nice uh, to see so many new faces. Um, tonight, it's my job to ensure that everybody receives feedback and I'm gonna use a simple method. I'm gonna give everyone a recommendation. So things, a thing or things they did well and at least one, um, um, uh, sorry, let me say that again. I'm gonna give you, um, commendations, more commendations and recommendations, things that you've done well, and at least one recommendation, something you can go away and improve on. So I'm going to start and also I want to apologize if I'm not looking directly at you, it's because my camera is quite high up. So I, I'm looking down for one of two reasons, either my camera or I'm using my notes because I am feeling a little bit rusty today, but I want to make sure I feed back thoroughly. So please forgive me for that. So the first person to speak this evening was Sumit, a well-seasoned speaker. And he started off, he took his time, he was well-paced and he repeated the question, which brought him some time to think about his answer. And he answered with his point of view. And he, he told us that, you know, we un um, his question was, 
those who forget the past will repeat it. And he said, well, we need to understand our past because we need to learn from it. So, and what he did was he took us on a journey where he then took this question, but then turned it to how as a society we need to learn and then how as individuals we need to learn. So he had a flow, he had an argument, uh, which I think he did really well. He used pauses. Well, I didn't really hear any ums and ahs, and he made it relevant. He took, he spoke about COVID and masks and how those are, those are important, but we need to learn so we don't repeat the mistakes and keep staying safe. The only recommendation I really have for Samit is, I felt the conclusion was a bit abrupt. I would go back to the question. So you, so you go back to where you started. So you finish off and it's a well-rounded answer. That, that, that would be my recommendation. The second person this evening was Luca. I, I don't know whether if it's, it was his first table topic, uh, but he, he was confident. Um, he initially wasn't sure of the question, but he asked for it to be repeated. And again, he used a personal story. He spoke about being at home in Italy, Andorra, cooking, and he spoke about the smell of vegetables and this particular book. So I felt like he, he drew us in with that personal story. In terms of recommendation, I feel like he could, could have made more of the personal story. And this is where, as you uh, grow at Toastmasters, what you'll do is, you will start talking about your, so for example, when he spoke about the vegetables, the warm vegetables, he could have said, uh, this, they simmered on the pot and the smell of garlic wafted. So really bring those memories to life, like really engage us even more. So take it to the next level. That would be my recommendation for Luca, but very well done. The third person this evening was Stefan. And he was straight to the point. He said, there's two things that, that um, the hints and tips he would do to improve memories, that would be repetition, and image association. Those are the two methods he used. Um, I would, a recommendation would be, uh, we at Toastmasters, we use the power of three. So you said repetition, image association. So going forward, maybe come up with a third one because uh, we use the power of three and it's more memorable. So that would be a recommendation. And the, the other recommendation would be, um, Project your voice a little bit more so everything is clear and uh, it's very hard to tell on the Zoom environment, but especially when we're in physical meetings, we want to hear you nice and clearly. But I, I felt like you were confident, you're well paced, and you answered the question. The fourth speaker this evening was Jay. And again, he, he came on, he, he took his time, his answer was engaging and well-paced and he spoke about music and you could tell he'd been listening because he then referred back to Luca in terms of he's a fellow Italian so it's quite nice to keep to bring that type of engagement in your in your table topic I think he did that well uh, the only recommendation is uh, I don't know if um, Jay has realized but there is a uh, something wrong with his audio there's a tapping noise and I all night there's like a squirrel tapping. I don't know if anyone else heard that, but that's not his fault, but it's just something when you, when you look back at this recording, you'll be able to see that. So next time you're on a Zoom call, um, you can just pay attention to that. But I, I felt like it, you answered the question well and it was engaging. So was it a problem with the audio? Can I ask you a question here? Okay, okay yes, quickly. <laughs> No, because was it you saying I was tapping the keyboard or? Yeah, it's just happening right now. We, I, I would suggest if you just watch back, you'll be able to tell. Okay, fine. Thank you. Sorry. The next speaker was Sifo. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, and I thought he had misheard the question first because he started talking about music, but then he spoke about his school and then linked the music with school. And he came across very confident. He was well paced. 
the the recommendation I would give to Sifo is he he's touched on a, he's touching on a personal example about being uh, with friends at school, but really give us one specific example, like a specific memory that we can hold on, which makes it memorable, which brings up those emotions and feelings. So that that would be my recommendation there. The final speaker this evening was Irina. Why are memories important? Uh, she used that tried and tested method of repeating the question, but she started off exploring the question. So she, she said, you know, memories are happy and sad. And then what she, what she did was she kind of, I felt like then she got into the flow of things and came up with the power of three. So they help us learn, they help remind us and memories change over the years. Um, my recommendation for Arena would be maybe come up with the power of three at the beginning. So, so if you're gonna answer the question, you could say, this is my answer and the reasons are one, two, three. So the, the structure is very clear, but overall, I feel like Arena delivered us her table topic confidently. It was well paced and you can tell that she's a, she's a seasoned speaker. So that's my feedback for all the speakers. I'm in time. Um, apologies if I was a bit rusty, uh, you know, I took on a challenge coming back, but it's nice to see you all and well done everybody. And can you share with us a memory please? Oh yes. I was going to say, actually, my memory is very similar to Linda's. Um, I, the thing about, uh, the thing that stands out for me at um, Toastmasters is uh, the people, especially here at Trojans, there's such a diver, diver, diverse range of people and you can never judge a book by its cover. And that's why I love, and my best speeches are the icebreaker speeches because you put someone you don't mean to, but you put them in a bit of a box and they come and deliver their icebreak and they just blow you away. And you're like, wow. Like, and I remember similar to um, Linda, I remember, um, I think his name was Mohammed. I think I've got it right. He's no longer a member, but he also had a stammer and he uh, delivered a speech at Trojans and he took the courage to stand up he, he did, he just had a slight stammer, but he told his story. And I, and I thought to myself, there's me being uncomfortable about public speaking, but he had so many more hurdles and he took the courage to stand there. And I, and I find that totally inspiring because, you know, you think you're scared, but there's people out there that, you know, have so many more obstacles and they step up and they inspire and, and they deliver. And that's what I love about uh, Toastmasters. So that's my um, memory. Brilliant. Thank you, Cam. Excellent. So can I call for the last time, please, our timekeeper to give us the times of the three evaluators, Melanie. Okay, so the uh, evaluator of the first speech, Lucy, took one minute and 53 seconds, which was in time. The evaluator of Momo's speech, the second speech, Rupa, took two minutes and 24 seconds, which was slightly out. And the table topics evaluator just now, Cam, took um, either eight minutes, 14 seconds, or including her memory, nine minutes, 35. So either in time or out of time. Yeah, no, the memory doesn't count. Okay, <laughs> so in time, eight minutes, 14. Excellent, wonderful. Thank you so much. Now, at this point, we will be uh, voting for, as I said, we're not voting for the best speaker because we only had two tonight, uh, but we will be voting for the best evaluator and we will be voting for the best table topics. Uh, we don't have a poll set up, so I'll need to ask people, please, if you're gonna vote for the evaluator, can you send a message to Sumit? Just a direct message in the chat to Sumit. And if you're going to vote for the table topics, please send it to Flora and Flora's ID is Trojan Speakers. So it's to Sumit for the evaluator and to Trojan speakers for the table topics, please. And timekeeper, if we can have one minute on the clock just to let everybody do that. <clears throat> OK, 
Can you say again, David? Sorry. Yeah. So if it's a vote for the time for the evaluator, uh, it goes to um, Sumit. And if it's for the table topics, it goes to Trojan speakers. Okay, thank you everyone. Right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna hear the reports from the other um, people who had roles to play this evening. So we've heard from Melanie throughout the evening on her times. Uh, what I'd like to do now is call Nish up to the stage to give us her report as the grenarian. Nish the Chu. Thank you, David. I have divided my report in three parts. I'll keep it uh, simple and short. I'll first um, quote some of the most beautiful examples of good use of language, grammar, and vocabulary. I'm not gonna say any names, you know who you are. And uh, I'll just say all the words and phrases that caught my attention tonight. Mr. Smedley captivated me. He wasn't a show off, wasn't flashy, not flamboyant, not everyday toastmaster. You don't want him over for dinner. Then I heard words like morally re reprehensible, close knit, disparage, inflammatory, my hat off to him. Rehabilitate. We also heard education is the key against all odds counterpart, vulnerable, home exigencies, incredibly powerful, was incredibly powerfully used. Those who forget the past are doomed to repeat it and extra points to Sumit for also giving us the name of the, the author, the person who gave this quote. History, would, uh, history never repeats but rhymes. Society at a detriment, revealing, introspect, Take care of your memories. That sounded very philosophical. Feeling rusty. And you can never judge a book by its cover. So these were some, some of the best uses of language I heard tonight. Part number two. Did any pigs fly tonight? Yes, they did. And they belong to David, Linda, and Sumit. And part number three, a section that I have taken the liberty to introduce. Uh, future grammarians, feel, feel free to um, use it or adopt this section. Words and things we have never heard before at Trojans. Scarface, snorky, joint and crack. You know which joint and crack I'm talking about. Kingpin, do goody, table topic mistress. Now I've never heard that before. See one, do one, teach one. We are using teens more than Zoom. I've never heard that before. I listen to music in eight languages. And my favorite, the last but not the least, Al Capone giving a call to Pathways website designers. Back to David. Thank you very much, Nish. Excellent grammarian report, wonderful. And our final um, role this evening uh, goes to uh, one of our newest members who is in her first capacity on taking on a role tonight, and that's Molly Doobie, who is our heart master. So over to you, Molly. Hi all, it's time for interesting quiz. Now I'm going to test your sharp memory. Question one, what was the first question asked by Laurie and to whom? She asked still about the different two, the two organizational structures. 
okay uh del is right but question is who is public enemy number 1 now second question what was the dream of moi moi yes to go and study abroad and experience different cultures uh no answer is back home and change the system now question number 3 when was al capone born eighteen seventy nine 17 january eighteen ninety nine Question number three. Where was Moi Moi born? The country or the city? City. This city. Um, I don't know. It was in Burma, wasn't it? I think, but I don't know. Mogo, <laughs> Rubilan, Mogo. Okay. Okay. Then next question is, what was the last question asked by Laurie? Which organization would we rather be involved with? So, how is leadership and mentorship? okay now next question what is the biggest reason of unethical act in a city like chicago organized crime corruption corruption now next question is what was the second table topic and to whom it was asked second table topic was luca and what is the question table it's topic about I a the first thing he remembered uh, what is your earliest memory okay earliest memory yes now the question is what is the three characteristics characteristic of a good leader or good leadership think you can have to tell us <laughs> what is right take care of people going explain by doing himself or herself fantastic last question who oh, is about yeah one more level? okay go ahead last question is who is about to go level 5 dose master level 5 lori slowly yeah that's all Excellent. thank you wonderful thank you so much mali and 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 if as i said to you when we spoke earlier if this were an in person meeting you'd have been throwing out sweets but there wouldn't have been many sweets thrown out trojans take that as a challenge we need to listen better <laughs> wonderful um my part of the meeting is now over and i would like to hand you back to your club president flora who together with sumi will announce the awards for the best evaluator and table topics tonight so flora over to you Thanks David thanks and thanks to everyone it was an excellent meeting so in term of the award um so we'll vote we we'll, we'll have the award for the best evaluator so i don't know if summit wants to to announce it 
the best evaluator? So the best evaluator is Cam. Well done, Cam. And then for the best um, table topic speaker, so there was actually a lot of uh, different opinions. Uh, that was very, very close, uh, which is really good. But the best um, table speaker tonight was Lucas. So well done, Lucas. Luca. Um, I also take the opportunity to uh, mention that we've, uh, as a committee, introduced three awards that uh, we want to just uh, run in the background. So there's a word of the best speaker, and that would be over time, you know, who is the best speaker, who is a um, member that actually win the most of the best speaker, but that's prepared speech. Um, and then we have as well the, value, the award of a Trojan uh, star, which is, uh, you know, the member that actually participated the most in terms of role um, and had done the most of the role as, as running the meeting. And that person needs also to do the Toastmaster role. And then the third award that we all want, want to um, uh, have is an influencer. So again, recognizing when member, you know, bring a new member or bring guests to the meeting. So just uh, send some come out, uh, but just bear that in mind as well. We'll, uh, we'll reward um, who participates during, you know, uh, more, more um, throughout the meetings, not just in, in, in this meeting. Um, the other little um, club business is also um, ex, uh, mentioning that this this weekend there are two two events organized by Toastmaster. So there is a division contest, uh, which is where um, Nishta is competing. <laughs> Nishta is competing for uh, on the humor speech. So I don't know if she's ready. How, how are you feeling, Nishta? I am terribly scared. I'm frightened because I'm trying to write a new speech and I still do not know. I, I know it's not going to inspire any confidence in the club, <laughs> but I'm trying my best. I, I'm just trying to put together a speech before Saturday morning. Well, but we look forward. If it's a new speech, it's even a, a, another reason to, to come and, and listen to, to your speech. Um, and that's open to the member and that's at 10 on Saturday. And there's as well all the other uh, topic on the agenda. So I think for the new member, uh, it's also worth trying trying to to listen and and, and, and attend. Um, there is also um, a webinar on Sunday about Pathway, which I thought was quite interesting. Uh, so if you want to learn more about Pathway, that is running um, in the Sunday um, evening. Um, in terms of other club business, as I mentioned at an introduction, we are looking for um, uh, set of arm. Um, so if everyone is interesting. I will um, ask around, <laughs> uh, especially maybe the, the new member if they, want, if they want to be part of the committee. And finally, just in terms of the next social, we are looking to gather your thought on um, a Christmas party or a social gathering before Christmas. Um, and the date that we have uh, where we will see, you know, what, what's the preference around the member is on the 12th of December or the uh, 11th of December. So I think either Saturday or Sunday. So we'll just run a little a little poll um, to, to see that. And then we'll organize something and that would be good to see each other um, face to face. So that, that's it for me. Um, I really liked the meeting. I um, don't know if anyone wants to give a final thought on how it went, uh, but that was really, really good. Um, thanks again, Laurie, for sharing your level project five with us and the panel discussion. Um, and thanks a lot to everyone that participated. Thank you. Good luck, Nishta, for Saturday. Thank you, Cam. Thank you, everyone. You, you'll do ace, and we know you will. So. <coughs> Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye, everybody. Thanks. thanks very much. Bye, thanks. Bye. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Mm -hmm. Good night. Uh, an outstanding meeting tonight. Absolutely outstanding. Really loved it. Thank you, Laura. It was good. Yeah. yeah. No, thanks. And thank you, Lucas. I don't know how you found it. It was. Uh... <laughs> yeah, it was a uh, so f funny for me, uh, and uh, really helpful. Also, uh, I'm so happy. <laughs> 
<laughs> for uh, yeah, to participate. Uh, so for, for me, it's very, very important. One for um, to improve my English and practice and and to learn the public speaking as well. So I'm have no, very happy. absolutely. And also, I think when you participate, it just gives you that energy, and you just want to do more for the next meeting. So yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Really great. Yeah, thank you so much to everyone. <laughs> Thanks. Great. Bye.